Hi everyone, my name is Diabetor, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Death's Poker plus 10 easily. The Death's Poker is a really strong, somber greatsword. While the damage of the sword itself mostly scales based on strength and dexterity, it has a super strong Ash of War that scales on intelligence. That Ash of War, Ghost Flame Ignition, does a ton of magic damage and also does a lot of frostbite buildup, making it really effective at debuffing your enemies and taking off huge chunks of their health. It has two forms, including an enormous explosion that'll just wreck anything you hit with it, as well as a long range attack that leaves a trail of magic ghost flame. This weapon is super strong, but it's balanced by the fact that you have to kill a Deathrite bird in Kaelid to get it, and these things are no joke. So today, I'm going to show you how to beat this thing as easily as possible, so that you can get the Death Poker. Then I'll show you how to upgrade the Death Poker to plus 10 as quickly as possible. The Deathbirds are considered undead enemies, and so they're extremely weak to holy damage. We're going to kill this one with holy water pots, so first we're going to go to Kale at the Church of LA, and buy the crafting kit and the three cracked pots that he sells. We're also going to pick up the recipe for holy water pots, in the form of the missionary's cookbook that he sells. After that, I suggest getting a bunch of throwing daggers, because they're just useful to have, and you're going to see me use them a couple times in this video. Also, make sure you grab the smithing stone and upgrade your weapons as you go along. We're going to be using the holy water pots to snipe the deathbird from a distance, so we're going to want to pick up a bunch of them in case you miss. One could be found in the groveside cave directly to the north of the Church of LA. Just be careful of the wolves, don't get murdered by them. After that, keep following the road to the north until you get to the gatefront ruins, rest of the grace and get the spectral steed whistle from Melina, then grab the map and go down into the cellar and grab the whetstone knife and the stormstomp ash of war. You can use the knife to put Ashes of War on your weapons. Now that we've got the map, here's just a picture of where the Groveside Cave is relative to the Gatefront Ruins and the Church of LA. You can see it's a cave found inside the cliff wall there. So now from the Gatefront Ruins, we're going to head to the northwest and we're going to follow the road around up to the Stormhill Shack where we're going to grab a Sight of Grace. And then after that, we're going to follow the road to the east to the War Master's Shack. On the plateau to the north of the War Master Shack, we're going to farm a bunch of smoldering butterflies, and we're also going to kill an enemy for an Ash of War that we're going to use to buff ourselves for the fight. Then we're going to take a little shortcut to get down to the road, and we're going to head to the east. Along the way, make sure you grab the Golden Seed so you can upgrade your flasks. Once you get up to the Stormhill Shack, grab the Sight of Grace because we're going to be coming back here later. There's also a Stone Sword Key here that you're going to grab. We're going to need two Stone Sword Keys later on when we're getting the Somber Stones to upgrade the Death's Poker. So make sure you grab them as you go along. Anyway, just keep following the road to the east and that'll take you into the woods where the War Master Shack is located. You can grab the Sight of Grace here. We're going to need a bunch of runes to buy the crack pots and a few other items here. So behind the War Master Shack, just to the south of it, on top of this hill, there's a graveyard that has a bunch of golden runes that we can use for some easy runes so that we don't have to actually grind for them. We're going to be stopping at a few other graveyards along the way, so you shouldn't really have to farm any runes at all. Also, be careful of those exploding piles of balls. Uh, don't let balls explode in your face. But uh, anyway... So, yeah, we shouldn't really need to grind for any runes here. Uh, also, at the War Master Shack, Bernal sells a bunch of different Ashes of War you can put on your weapons. I bought the Endure Ash of War for, I think, 600 runes, um, because it's just a good one to have. I ended up not using it here, but it gives you a bunch of damage resistance, and it stops you from getting staggered by enemy attacks. So if the Deathbird fights back against you, then it's good to have Endure so you can just keep throwing your Holy Pots. After that, we're going to get back on course and head to the north. There's a fire patch here that has a bunch of smoldering butterflies and a couple slugs. We're going to use the butterflies to make fire pots to kill an Erdtree avatar for an item we need later. You can farm infinite butterflies here by grabbing them, then going back and resting at the War Master Shack Grace and running back here to grab more butterflies. Also to the east of it, there's a knight you can kill and he will drop the Golden Vow Ash of War. And in my case, he also dropped his helmet, which is nice of him. Golden Vow increases all your damage by about 11% and decreases the damage you take by about 7%, so it's just nice to have, and we're going to stack it with a couple other buffs uh, to kill the Deathbird. Also, on top of the nearby ruin, there's a Scarab that drops a Somber Stone 1, which we're going to need to upgrade the Death Spoker once we get it, so that's nice to have. Anyway, head to the north, and you can drop down the cliffs to take a shortcut down to the road, grab the Sight of Grace by the Saint's Bridge, and go over it. 
Be careful of the pumpkin head. Make sure you grab the smithing stones along the way. On the other side of the bridge is a merchant. Talk to him and we're going to buy a cracked pot from him. He sells it for 600 runes, so you can sell some of the golden runes we picked up earlier. He also sells a bunch of smithing stones, which you'll find helpful, so I suggest you buy those. After that, we're going to head east into Kalid. Along the way, we're going to pass through Summon Water Village, and we're going to grab the Summon Water Village outskirts, Site of Grace, on the west end of the village. We're grabbing this Site of Grace because we're going to need to come back to this area later, so it's good to just have a little shortcut. Anyway, head through the village, towards the Erd Tree. Once you get up to this hill, you see the smoldering church there. There's a Site of Grace inside of it that you're going to want to grab. You get invaded by an NPC if you go around the front of the church, so I like to follow the cliff and come in from the side of it. After grabbing that grace, we're heading down towards the minor Erd Tree. There's a bunch of guardians on the road down to the tree, but if you hug this cliff here, then they shouldn't aggro on you. And similarly, if you follow this cliff, then the putrid avatar here shouldn't attack you, and you can come up to this big root. Be careful of those golems over there, because I've had times where they've actually aggroed on me from across the way here, uh, and they shoot fucking explosive arrows at you, and it sucks. But anyway, there's a big root here, and if you go out onto the end of it, there's another cracked pot that we're gonna grab. After that, we're going back to Summon Water Village, and we're going to head south towards the Third Church of America. Along the way, we're also going to stop at one of the graveyards up on the cliff here, so we can grab a bunch of golden runes, as well as the crafting recipe for sleep pots, which we're going to need later on when we're collecting the somber stones to upgrade the death poker. Without the map, it can be a little tricky to find this way down, but there's a bunch of tombstones on the cliff here that you can use to get down onto the lower part of the cliff where the graveyard is. The main item to grab here is the Fever's Cookbook, which has the recipe for sleep pots, which we're going to use later on to fight the Godskin Noble at the Volcano Manor so that we can get a Somber Stone 7. Here's the approximate spot of where we're at on the map, uh, in case this helps at all. Uh, you can see it once you grab the map of the Mistwood. You can actually see where this is, but there's also this gigantic archway here uh, that you can go up to get to the graveyard. Anyway, when we head over to the Third Church of America, at the north end of that road, we're going to grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic, as well as the Sacred Tear, and then we're going to head out the window and go up north and grab the Sacred Blade Ash of War from the Scarab here. This is an alternative to using Holy Pots, um, but it doesn't get nearly as much range, so I ended up using just Holy Pots. But in the event that you don't want to farm materials for Holy Pots, which is the Tarnished Sunflowers and Mushrooms, uh, you can use Sacred Blade instead. Anyway, after that, we're following the road to the south. We're going to go over to the Mistwood Minor Erd Tree and grab the map. There's also a couple Physic Tears you can grab, and the main thing we're here for is around the Erd Tree, there's a ton of Tarnished Golden Sunflowers, so this is a good place to farm them. Um, the Sites of Grace, the nearest Site of Grace is the Mistwood Outskirts, and it's kind of far away, but there's like 20 of these things here, so you can farm a bunch of them at a time. So if you need to stock up on them, this is the place to do it in the early game. Like I said, we need those to craft holy water pots. Also, we're going to head just south of the minor earth tree where there's a merchant that we can buy some stuff from. And then we're going to go down to Fort Height, where we're going to grab a golden seed and the left half of the Dectus Medallion. So here's that merchant. He sells a few smithing stones you can use to upgrade your weapons, and he also sells a couple Trina's Lilies, which you can use to craft sleep pots. Those don't respawn when you pick them up as plants, so it's good to grab them wherever you can. After that, go south to Fort Height, make sure you grab the Site of Grace beside the cliff there. We're going to grab the Golden Seed to upgrade our flasks. And then inside Fort Height, there's a couple things here. Um, in a small room down there, there's the recipe for the Blood Grease. And there's also this Knight that you can kill, and he drops the Bloody Slash Ash of War. But the main thing we're here for is the left half of the Dectus Medallion. We're going to use this later on to go up to the Altus Plateau for the Somber Stones. Uh, killing this knight is optional, but if you kill him, he drops Bloody Slash, uh, which is a good Ash of War to have, but I didn't end up using it in this run. Up next, we're going to make our way down to the Weeping Peninsula for a couple more Cracked Pots, so we're going to head west from Fort Height. We're going to stop at a graveyard along the way, and then we're going to take this path here that leads to the Bridge of Sacrifice, which lets us get to the Weeping Peninsula. This graveyard is filled with a bunch of wolves, so be careful not to get stunlocked by them if you're on Torrent. And then if you keep following the path up, you can go straight over to the uh, Bridge of Sacrifice. You can bait out a shot from the big ballista there by just running sideways, and then while it's reloading, you can get behind it. 
Uh, there's a couple smithing stones, and there's also another stone sword key here. So like I said, we need two stone sword keys later on, so make sure you grab that while you're passing by it. We're going to follow the road south into the Weeping Peninsula. We're going to stop by the Castle Morn Rampart, where we're going to grab the map and a golden seed. And there's also a merchant here that sells a cracked pot. Make sure you grab the cracked pot, and while you're here, you can also pick up a couple more smithing stones, and even a smithing stone too, which you can use to upgrade your stuff. So that's really helpful to have, obviously. Make sure you grab it while you're here. But the main thing is the cracked pot. Just south of the merchant, there's the map, and there's also a golden seed a little bit to the southwest of the map on a little cliff thing. So we're going to grab those while we're here. In this area, there's a golem archer off in the distance that'll shoot great arrows at you. His rate of fire is really slow, but when you're a low-level character, it can do a lot of damage to you, so be careful. But anyway, grab the golden seed, and then we're heading back up to the site of grace. For the sake of brevity, I didn't get these items, but there are three sacred tiers that you can get on the uh, Weeping Peninsula. Uh, you can see I'm marking the churches where they're at. Uh, so make sure you grab those. There's also the Morn Tunnel that you can go to uh, if you want some smithing stones to upgrade your stuff more. And there's also a really good weapon there too. But anyway, what we're going to go to is the Demi-Human Forest Ruins that you see here. And just to the north of it, there is a Crystal Tear, which we're going to use in our Wondrous Physic to increase our faith and make our Holy Pots do more damage. It's a pretty linear path up to it, so just follow the road and run up to it and grab the Faith Knot Crystal Tear. This increases your faith by 10 for 3 minutes when you drink it in the Physic. Now we're done with Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula, so we're going to follow the road north from the Stormhill Shack... And we're going to take a secret path to go around Stormvale Castle, so we can get to Lyernia without having to fight Margaret or Godric. We are going to come back to fight them later, but for now, I just want to get to Lyernia and grab the stuff that we need for the uh, Deathrite Bird. I'm also going to make a quick stop on this plateau to the northeast of the Stormhill Shack, where there is the Strength Knot Crystal Tier, which is going to increase our strength by 10 for 3 minutes in the Wondrous Physic, and that's going to be useful for killing that Erdtree Avatar with the Fire Pots, because Fire Pots scale with uh, strength. Once you're in the Urnia, make sure you stop by the church and grab the Sacred Tier, and then we're going to follow the road west and north down to the lake level. At the bottom of the hill, there's a merchant. He sells a lantern and a bunch of smithing stones, so make sure you grab all of those. The lantern we're going to need later on, because there's a couple dark areas we need to go into, and it's nice to be able to see. It costs 1,800 runes, so using the golden runes that we grabbed, it should be pretty easy to purchase. After that, we're going to go north and grab the map so that we can see what we're doing, and then after the map, we're going to head north to the Lascar ruins where there's a site of grace. So once you get to the map, it's surrounded by these three Wraith Callers. Lead them away from the map, because if you just try to run up to it, then they can hit you and stunlock you, and you'll die. So be careful, uh, make sure you lead them away first. Anyway, so just to the northwest of the map, there's the Alaskar Ruins, where there's a Site of Grace. We're gonna need to come back to this thing later, so you can see there's like a circular gazebo in the middle of the ruins. That's a teleporter that we're gonna take in a little bit, but first, we're gonna make a couple stops in this area. So we're gonna head all the way to the west, underneath the gigantic plateau that you're gonna see in a minute, and there's also an island there that's mostly obscured by the map. That's a more convenient side of grace for something we're going to have to come back to even later on. So we're going to grab both of these things. So, like I said, here's that gazebo, but we're not taking that right now. So first I went up to this island and I grabbed the side of grace. This is called the Scenic Isle. We're going to need to come back here later. And then after that, we're going to head west underneath this gigantic peninsula thing. And there's a couple items we're going to grab over here. If you come in under the plateau from the east, then if you swing to your right and go straight to the north, there's a gazebo here that has the folly on the lake side of Greece. We're going to use this to farm mushrooms to make our holy pots and our fire pots. So just to the northeast of the gazebo, you'll see there's this big tree next to these rocks, and there's two mushrooms underneath it, so you can run up and grab these. And of course, these respawn when you rest at the Grace. But also, if you head around to more to the north, there's this big rock that has four more mushrooms underneath it. So you can grab all six of these things, and then just run back to the grace, rest at it, and they all respawn. And that's how you can stock up on mushrooms real quick. After that, we're going back under the plateau and heading to the southwest, and we're going to grab all these Trina's lilies over here, which we're going to need for the Godskin Noble later on. These do not respawn, so don't waste them. You can farm them from some enemies, but it takes forever. Anyway, after that... We're going to head back to the Alaska Ruins, and we're going to take the Teleporter and the Gazebo. This will take us straight to the South Rayalucaria Academy Gate. 
There's a side of grace here, so make sure you grab it. And then if you head south from this grace, you can head through the Academy Gate Town. And just outside of it, there's a golden seed, and then there's the map for the central part of Lyurnia. Along the way, there's a couple items to grab, so like the Smithing Stone 3. And then just outside of it, if you head to your right a little bit, there's a golden seed. Make sure you grab that so you can upgrade your flasks. And then it's a straight shot over to the map, which also has a site of grace next to it, so make sure you grab that. From here, we're going to head to the northeast towards the dry part of Laernia. So there's this path here uh, behind these woods that takes you up onto this dry area. You can follow the road. There's a site of grace there that's called the Eastern Tableland, which we're going to need to come back to. And then just south of it, there's these big rocks that take you across that canyon. There's another site of grace here at the Artist Shack, which is just nice to grab. And then if you head southeast from the Artist Shack, this takes you to a cliff here. And if you look to the top right of the crosshair, you can see there's like tombstones sticking out from the cliff. If you jump down the tombstones, and that takes you to Jarburg, where there's like three cracked pots that we're going to grab. So that's going to be really nice just to have some uh, extra ammunition against the Death Ray Bird. The lake is flat because it's a lake, so we're going to just have a straight shot over to this first site of grace. You can see those rocks up there that we're going to use to cross over this canyon. So follow the road around to the north. This takes you to the eastern tableland, site of grace. And then south of that, if you run past the Fire Monk camp, there's going to be these rocks that you can jump over. And this takes you to the Artist's Shack. Grab the Site of Grace here. And then if you go south around that big tower there, that takes us over to Jarburg. So just to recap, here's the Sites of Grace that we grabbed. So the Eastern Lake Shore, Eastern Tableland. And then we headed south over the rock. And now we're at the Artist's Shack. And we're going to head down to Jarburg. So at the cliff that leads down to Jarburg, if you go to like the more northern part of it, uh, be careful, you know, don't fall off, but you'll see there's these tombstones here, and you can use them to platform your way down to Jarburg. Uh, there's also like a scarab over here, there's the, the blue uh, cerulean tier scarab. Uh, but yeah, you can see it pretty clearly on the map, there's the tombstones sticking out from the cliff. So be careful dropping down here, like I said, make sure you grab the artist shack set of grace in case you fall off to your death. Uh, you know, just take your time, be patient, and jump down to it. There's a bunch of stuff to grab here. So there's the smithing stones, there's a set of grace, make sure you grab that. There's a ton of plants you can farm, including a couple that don't respawn, like that Michelozili that I picked up. Um, I think there's one or two Trinas at least too. There's that NPC, Jar Baron, you can talk to. But what we're here for is the cracked pots. So there are ritual pots, which are used to make a separate kind of throwing pot. We're looking for these cracked pots. There's two ritual pots and three cracked pots, and obviously you want to grab all of them, but the first one was in that shack there. The second cracked pot is right here on this staircase just across the way from that shack, and then here's another ritual pot on top of this big jar and a train of zilly, so that's nice to grab. And then by these tombstones that are just across from the site of grace, there's the last cracked pot. So that gives us an extra three cracked pots, and we are up to ten now. After Jarburg, we're going to fast travel back over to the Eastern Tableland, and we're going to head north up into the uh, Ul Palace Ruins. The map isn't actually accurate here, because there's a couple curves that you have to go around in order to get up to this area over here where the tree is, uh, but there's a couple sites of grace, and then it leads over past a couple walking mausoleums, and that takes us to the Minor Erd Tree, where we're going to kill the Avatar for the Crystal Tear that it drops. Once you get up past this big statue, you need to make a left and follow like the curve around up to the upper levels of the ruins. And you see there's these archers that shoot these enchanted shot magic arrows at you. They home in on you and they do a fuckload of damage, so be careful of them. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting owned here, but you can pretty much just run past them and grab the Sight of Grace. Uh, and if you rest at it, then all the enemies lose their aggro. Um, just be careful, because even though you think you're in cover, you might not actually be in cover. Uh, case in point, in my previous recording of this, uh, which is why this video took so long to make, because I had to redo it, because this one sucked. Uh, you can see this arrow curves around the fucking corner, so this guy curved the fucking bull like in Wanted, uh, and he fucking murdered me, so, uh, apparently that's a thing that can happen, so be careful of that. Anyway, after that, we're heading north up towards the Erd Tree. It's pretty safe after that side of Grace, the Ruined Labyrinth, I believe it's called. Uh, there's just these mausoleums, just be careful not to get stomped by them. Uh, but it's pretty much just a straight path up to the second side of Grace. 
We're gonna do some quick prep for this Erdtree Avatar fight, so we're gonna use the Strength Knot Crystal tier uh, to increase the damage we get with Fire Pots, because they scale with your strength, uh, and then you can use whatever you want in the second slot, it doesn't really matter. And then you're gonna make sure you have a bunch of Fire Pots, uh, because the tree is made out of wood and it is weak to fire, of course. Uh, and then you're also going to want to make sure you equip those fire pots into your quick item slot so that you can actually use it. And we're going to have any weapon with the Golden Vow Ash of War on it. Doesn't matter what weapon you use, but preferably having a weapon that does strike damage, like a hammer of some kind, uh, is good because the Urtree Avatar is weak to strike damage and fire damage. There's about a dozen of these guys here, and I don't feel like fighting them because that takes forever. So if you follow the cliff and go around the tree, uh, in this area back here, there are no bad guys. So you can throw like a throwing dagger at the tree or just walk up to it and let it aggro on you. Uh, and you can lure it away from the little guys and fight it over here where there's no bad guys. Uh, so the strategy for the fighting this tree is really simple. Just getting close to it, dodge an attack, and then hit it with an attack. I'm using charged heavy attacks on the club. Uh, so that I can get poise breaks really easily, and then instead of going for the repost, I hit it with three fire pots, which just chunks the shit out of its health. And so it's pretty much just rinse and repeat, just dodge, swing, dodge, swing. Uh, sometimes it does like this ass blast or the uh, golden slam uh, or golden land, whatever it's called, uh, but it shouldn't be too hard to deal with. This is a pretty simple enemy. When it dies, it drops three crystal tiers. You're going to use the Holy Shrouding Crack tier to increase our holy damage by 20% for three minutes. So now we're just about ready to fight the Deathbird, and I'm going to show you how to get to it in a minute, but I just want to establish that this thing only spawns at night. So make sure you pass time at the Site of Grace in order to make it nighttime so you can actually fight the thing. Uh, and I tried getting up close to it because I, I don't really like using cheese strats all that much. Um, but these things fucking suck and I really don't enjoy fighting them all that much if I'm being honest with you. Uh, and they're kind of a bitch to learn. So uh, rather than doing it like that, I instead took the suggestion from my boy the Gambolator over on the Diabetor Discord server. Make sure you join it because we're a great group of people and we want to grow. Uh, and we're going to jump on top of the skull by the cliff to uh, throw holy pots down at the bird from above. Uh, so behind the Third Church of America, there's a teleporter that takes you over to the Bestial Sanctum in the Dragon Barrow. And then from here, you can just head directly south towards the Minor Erd Tree nearby. Along the way, make sure you grab a golden seed so you can upgrade your stuff. And then there's also this giant bridge that has a dragon on it. Uh, grab the Sight of Grace there in case the dragon kills you, but you can just run past the dragon pretty easily. Uh, I got hit there, but it shouldn't be too hard. And then behind the Erd Tree, you can take this Spirit Spring up to Fort Faroff. Uh, we also needed to come here anyway, because we have to go into Fort Faroff and grab the right half of the Dectus Medallion so that we can uh, go up to the Altus Plateau later on. So might as well stop in and grab that while we're here. Now you're going to see I already have the map of Caelid because like I said I tried fighting the Deathbird uh, down on his level before uh, and it didn't really work out. But essentially uh, you don't really even need the map to be able to see it. We're going to come over to this giant skull to the southwest of the fort and then you're going over to the Church of the Plague where you're going to grab the Sacred Tear and the Site of Grace. This is unfortunately the nearest Site of Grace to the Deathbird uh, and it's kind of a run back to it so if you manage to die... Uh, it's a bit of a journey, but it's worth it to make it a lot easier to actually kill this fucking thing. Uh, but yeah, so here's where the death bird actually spawns, and this is the cliff that we're going to be on top of. So from the Church of the Plague, there's a road that leads to the south, and it's just a straight shot down to the death bird. Uh, before we go there, we're going to want to make sure we prepare for it. So make sure you rest at the Site of Grace until nightfall, so you don't have to run back uh, in case you forgot to do that. Uh, and our Wondrous Physic, we're going to use the Faith Knot Crystal tier and the Holy Shrouding Crack tier. Uh, this increases our Faith and increases our Holy Damage. And the Holy Water Pots scale with Faith, so the increase to Faith is going to make them do a lot more damage. You need any weapon with Golden Vow on it. Doesn't really matter what it is because we're not going to be uh, attacking with the weapon. And then I also put Endure on a weapon just in case I needed it, in case the bird starts attacking. Um, but I ended up not using it here. And finally, we're going to want to craft as many holy pots as you can. Uh, I showed you where to get 10 of them. I picked up an 11th because there's another one in Caleb that I had grabbed, uh, but 10 should be more than enough. It's only going to take about 3 or 4 to actually kill the bird, uh, so the other ones are just for uh, getting our aim down because we're going to be free aiming these things. 
So yeah, just follow the road south from the Church of the Plague. There's a bunch of enemies along the way, but you can run past them. Be careful of that troll that was on the right, because if it aggros on you, it's going to be throwing giant magic pots at you, uh, and those can be really obnoxious to deal with. So make sure you don't get close enough to actually get the troll's attention. Anyway, there's a giant skull, and if you head down it, you can get to this little ledge of mushrooms here, uh, and this gives you a straight shot overlooking the bird. And so if you try to lock onto it, you're always going to throw short. So what you need to do is lock onto it, make sure you're facing it, which is easier to do if you're not on torrent, because your guy automatically turns when you lock onto a bird. Uh, so you can drink your physic, cast golden vow. Uh, make sure you have enough blue flasks, by the way, because the holy pots cost uh, FP. But yeah, so just free aim toward the bird and just, you know, try to judge the uh, elevation that you need. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. And the bird is pretty big, so you have a bunch of leeway when it comes to actually being able to hit it. Uh, so there you saw I ran out of FP, so make sure you have at least a couple blue flasks so that you can actually restore your FP. It tried to attack me. I'm fairly confident that some of its attacks are capable of reaching you up here, um, but it didn't happen during my run. Uh, but yeah, if it starts attacking you, you can use Endure to give yourself a bunch of damage resistance and reduce the chance of dying. But anyway, it shouldn't be too hard to kill the bird, and once it's dead, uh, you will get the Death's Poker, uh, which is the main weapon that we're here for. I am going to walk you through getting this thing up to plus 10 in this video, but I wanted to try to keep it short. So if you want a more detailed guide about how to get a plus 10 somber weapon early, I suggest you check out my dedicated video for that. First off, we're going to go back to the Academy Gate Town, and we're going to come to this gazebo out in the middle of the lake over here. This is a teleporter that's going to take us to the west side of Liurnia at the King's Realm Ruins. So take the teleporter, and it spits you out right here, right next to the West Liurnia map. And then just north of you is the King's Realm Ruins, and on the other side of the ruins is going to be E.G. the Blacksmith. And E.G. sells Somber Stones 1, 2, 3, and 4, so we're going to grab all of those from him right here. So go through the King's Realm Ruins, hit the Illusory Wall at the end of the ruins, there's a Set of Grace, you can grab that, then talk to E.G. You're going to have to talk to him twice uh, if this is your first time talking to him. And then you go to Purchase, and he sells Infinite Somber Stone 1 and 2. And he also sells three each of three and four. So to upgrade the Death's Poker, you're going to need one of each of these. So make sure you buy them and upgrade that shit. This is a good spot to use those golden runes that we picked up so that you can actually purchase the Somber Stones and purchase the upgrades for the Death's Poker. Now, I said that EG sells one, two, three, and four, but you don't actually need to buy a Somber Stone four from him because the path that we're going to take here, so first go around the wall, you can just jump across the cliff here. We're going to go down to the uh, lower ground level here, uh, and so here is a safe spot where you can jump down without taking fall damage. And if you follow the cliff up around by these big rocks you see on the map here, uh, there's a crystal tier that we're going to grab, which will increase our intelligence by 10, which we're going to use to make the Death's Poker stronger for when we fight the Godskin Noble in a little bit. But like I was saying, there's actually a free Somber Stone 4 down here if you want to grab it over on this little spot of land over here. There's a corpse in a chair that has a Somber Stone 4 on it, so you don't actually need to buy that from EG. And we're going this way anyway because we're going to take the path through the ravine, and then there's like a hill going up this uh, cliff thing here, and we're going to take this to get up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. I didn't grab it here, but there is a golden seed at the end of the ravine, which was back the left way that I was just looking at. Uh, so make sure you go grab that golden seed before you come up here. And also, once we come up into this church through that little tunnel thing you see on the left there, uh, there's also a sacred tier, so you can upgrade your flasks a bunch here. Anyway, so we are at the Bellum Church. We are going to follow the road up north to the Grand Lift of Dectus. Now, the problem with the road is that there's a bunch of fortifications and trebuchets on it that'll shoot us if we go on the road. So instead, we're going to follow the cliff on the north we're going to follow the edge of the cliff, and if you stay close to that, then the trebuchets can't shoot at you, and you can use that to safely get up to the road. Once you get past, like, the hill part that you saw there, um, the trebuchets won't be able to shoot at you. Uh, so you can just get on the road and run straight to the Grand Lift of Dectus. Make sure you grab the Sight of Grace at the entrance here, because we're going to have to come back. Because before we go up to the Altus Plateau, we need to go and do the first part of Raya's quest so that we can get the Volcano Manor invitation, and she will teleport us to the Volcano Manor once we go up to the Altus Plateau. So we're going back to the Scenic Isle Sight of Grace that we grabbed before, and at the gazebo to the east of it, the one with the telescope next to it on the map, you can talk to Raya, and then directly northwest of this gazebo, there's the Boil Prawn Shack, 
While we're here, there's also a few train of zillies by this tree right across from the grace, so make sure you grab that. But you can talk to the black guard here, and he will sell you Raya's necklace for a thousand runes. So buy that from him, then bring the necklace back to Raya at the gazebo, and she will give you the invitation to Volcano Manor. Now go back to the Grand Lift of Dectus, use the medallion to go up to the Altus Plateau. You're going to see Raya first thing, but don't talk to her yet. There's a site of grace on this big rock over here, and we're going to need to come back to this area later. So grab this site of grace so you don't have to take the Grand Lift of Dectus again. But anyway, grab that grace, come back and talk to Raya, and she will teleport you to the Volcano Manor. Once you're here, you can talk to Lady Tanith, and she will offer uh, for you to join the Volcano Manor. So accept, and she will give you the drawing room key. And then once you go into the hallway, the first door on the right, you can open with the key. And you're going to want a light source for this because it's dark. You can just run up against that wall there like you saw. And it's an illusory wall, which takes you into the sex dungeon. And then you just go straight ahead and sneak past the Bloodhound Knight. Grab the Sight of Grace in the Prison Town Church. I did a little bit of preparation for the fight here. But uh, we're going to talk about this more in a little bit. But this is a spot. Uh, there's going to be a shortcut that goes to the Godskin Noble in a little bit. And uh, you can use this to prepare and respawn for the uh, Godskin Noble fight. Anyway, go into the prison town. We need to get up to that temple up there. So uh, for the purpose of this guide, instead of going through the entire town, you know, there's a bunch of stuff here to explore and do that. But instead of doing that, we're just going to take this shortcut so you can drop down onto the roof and then drop down to the lower cliffs. The lava slows you down, but you can roll to go slightly faster and make sure you keep healing so you don't die. Before we go up the stairs to the temple, we're first going to come over here to this messed up part of town, and we're going to grab a somber stone 6 off of this roof here, and then now you can go back towards the stairs and head up to the temple, sneak past that man serpent, be careful because if he hits you on the elevator, he might knock you off, and instead of going to the temple, we're going to make a right and come over to this corpse, where we're going to grab a somber stone 5, and then now we're going to head up to the temple, but instead of going inside, we're going to come around the side here and hit this lever to raise the bridge, and now this is a shortcut that leads from the prison town church back to the Godskin Noble uh, arena so that if you die, you can just respawn there at the church. Make sure you use those somber stones we just picked up to upgrade the death poker to plus six because we're going to use it to kill the Godskin Noble. And then you can head back to the prison town church. So for our preparation, we have the plus six death poker. You can also use like a bleed weapon like the claws or a katana or something, but the death poker will be really good against this guy. Uh, you need any weapon that has golden vow on it because we're going to use it for the buff. We're not actually going to attack with that weapon. You need a bunch of sleep pots, so that requires mushrooms and trina zolis to craft, but we collected a bunch of those. And then finally, in our wondrous physic, we're going to use the magic shrouding tier and the intelligence not crystal tier, both of which will increase the damage that we do with the death poker ash of war. For the first time that you do this fight, you can actually walk up to about the second set of pews uh, before the Godskin Noble spawns in and the fight starts. So you can come in here and buff, uh, but if you die, then there will be a fog wall and you have to use your buffs outside of the arena first. Um, which doesn't really matter all that much, but you know, it's something you can take advantage of on your first run. Anyway, drink the Physic, cast Golden Vow, and make sure you have at least two blue flasks because you're going to need them for the Ash of War for the Death's Poker and make sure you refill your FP before the fight. So, I'm gonna die on this run, but you see uh, I'm hitting him with a sleep pot to knock him out, and then you just blast him with the uh, Ghost Flame Ignition on that Death's Poker. So I had died here because I ran out of FP, uh, and I wanted to do this, you know, with FP. So make sure you have enough Blue Flask for this. You can drink your Physic, cast Golden Vow, switch to the Death's Poker. I also couldn't enter the Fog Wall because that fucking message there. But I switched to the Death's Poker, and I should have drank a Blue Flask here, but I didn't. But I think it works out just fine. And then you can hit him with a Sleep Pot while he's doing an attack animation or something. And then just hit him with the Ghost Flame Ignition. So you want to go up to him so that your sword is going to be inside of him. If you hit L2, then your guy sticks the Poker out. And then you have to hit the Heavy Attack button, R2, and that'll make him do the Explosion. Uh, and so that's going to proc Frostbite on him and just do a fuckload of damage. Uh, and then after he wakes up, you can hit him with another sleep pot, put him back to sleep, and then just repeat until he's dead. Uh, so it shouldn't take very long. Should be pretty easy because you're going to do a fuckload of damage with the plus six death poker. Uh, if he does his roll thing, you can just roll through it. 
Once he's dead, there's going to be an elevator that comes down next to the site of grace. We're going to take that to go deeper into the volcano manor. Like I said before, you need two stone sword keys for this next part. So make sure you have two stone sword keys before you go here because the statue that we're going to use the stone sword keys on is really far away from the site of grace and you don't want to have to run all the way back, uh, you know, if you have to go somewhere else to get stone sword keys first. So make sure you have two stone sword keys before you come here. Anyway, it's a pretty simple run through the manor, so, you know, there's stuff to explore, but for the purpose of this guide, we just run through it. Once you get up to this big throne room, you make a left and go up the stairs, and you will find the imp statue, which requires, again, two stone sword keys. Make sure you have two stone sword keys. Uh, and this leads you into Rikard's secret sex dungeon, and then you can just jump down the cages. Be careful, because there's a uh, mage across the way, and he will shoot magic spells at you. Uh, but essentially, just jump down the cages, and then you see here, there's a another cage down on the ground level here, so drop down onto this so you don't take fall damage. And then if you head to the east, this room um, has an ash of war, and it takes you back to the Volcano Manor drawing room. Uh, we're going to head to the west, because that's where the uh, Somber Stone 7 that we need is. So make sure you orient yourself towards the west, and you can run out here, run past the Virgin Abductor, and grab the Somber Stone 7 off of the ledge. The Somber Stone 8 and 9 are a lot easier to get to, so we're going back to Fort Faroth and the Dragon Barrow, and we're going to follow the road to the west toward the map. We need to go up to the Divine Tower of Caelan. We don't actually need to go inside, the stones are right next to it. But, so, go grab the map, and then directly north of it will be the Divine Tower. At the base of the Divine Tower, there's this Scarab. When you kill it, it explodes, so be careful of that. But when it dies, it drops a Somber Stone 8. And then if you head to the southwest, you'll see that there's a hill over here. And once you go down this, there is a circle of chairs, and this has a Somber Stone 9. So you can now get up to a plus 9 Death's Poker using the 7 from Volcano Manor and the 8 and 9 from the Dragon Barrow. To get the Ancient Dragon Somber Stone and bring the Death's Poker up to plus 10, you're going to need to kill at least one Demigod, so I always just go with the easiest one, which is Godric, and since we have a plus 9 Somber weapon, which is nearly maxed out, uh, killing these bosses is going to be fucking hilariously easy. So that was Margit, and then make your way through Stormvale, you'll get to Godric, and it's pretty much the same thing, just spank him with the fucking Ghost Flame Ignition. He has more health, but he's still hilariously easy with this because we just do so much damage. Once you've killed at least one demigod, you can go back to the round table hold and talk to Enia. Talking to her here is necessary because it's part of activating Vare's questline and that's how we're going to get the Ancient Dragon Sombra Stone. So we need to go over to the Rose Church in Lyurnia. The nearest site of grace that we have right now is the Folly on the Lake, but on this ruin here, there's a slightly closer site of grace. So make sure you grab that because we're going to have to come back here a couple times. Anyway, go to the Rose Church, talk to Vare. He will give you five festering bloody fingers. He wants you to invade three people in multiplayer. You don't actually have to do that. Um, there's an NPC we can kill instead of doing that. So we're going to go back up to the Altus Plateau. And if you follow the road to the north, so you see there's like a fork in the road here, take the north path. We're going to grab the map up here so we can see what we're doing. There's also a golden seed along the way, so make sure you grab that. But once we have the map, we'll be able to see. We're going to take a shortcut that I thought about fairly recently. I'm sure I'm not the first person to discover this. But anyway, so here we are relative to the Altus Plateau site of grace. Uh, instead of going to the bridge, we're going to make a left down this cliff here towards the second Church of America. And by the way, there's a sacred tear there, so make sure you grab it. And if you go across this little bridge thing, the little land bridge there, there's a spirit spring that takes you up onto this higher cliff. And that takes us directly to the Writhe Blood Ruins, where we're going to go find that NPC we need to kill. So here we are, going down to the second Church of America. Watch your step. There's a few dogs in the Sanguine Noble here, so don't get your ass kicked. They go through the graveyard. Find the spirit spring by the cliff, and you can jump straight up it. And then now you have a straight shot over to the Writhe Blood Ruins. So in the ruins, there's a bunch of blistered dogs that do bleed. And again, so here we are. Uh, this specific building is where you need to be. Underneath this bridge right here, um, there's a set of grace that you can grab in case you need to come back here for whatever reason. But anyway, don't die to the dogs like I did there. Uh, and there is a sign on the ground that you can use to invade Magnus the Beast Claw. Uh, we need to kill him for Vary's questline, but the plus 9 death poker shouldn't be too hard. Uh, the explosion does a lot of damage, and if he runs away, you can use the R1 instead, 
and that ghost flame does a fuckload of damage, apparently. Uh, so yeah, kick Magnus' ass, make sure you teabag him, and he drops a Great Stars and another Somberstone 6 for you. And now it's time to head back to the Rose Church, because that satisfied the three invasions requirement for Vare's quest. Now he gives you the Lord of Blood's favor, and he wants you to dye it with a Maiden's Blood. Unfortunately, as Elden Ring No Lifers, we are Maidenless, but if we head back to the Grand Lift of Dectus, we can take a path to the south of it, which will bring us up to the Frenzy Flame Village, where there is a dead Maiden whose body we can exploit for blood. Uh, yeah, so here's a path that we can take. Uh, there's a Frenzy Flaming Tower here, and it's like the Eye of Sauron. As you come up to it, it builds up madness on you and does damage to you, so we need to disable that. And then there's a Sight of Grace just outside the Frenzy Flame Village, so we're going to grab that in case we die in the area. So here I am coming from the Grand Lift of Dectus, just head south, follow the road toward the uh, Frenzy Flame Tower. Make sure you take this little side path because it's safer, and you can take the Spirit Spring. So wait for the flame to turn off. Then take the Spirit Spring up, and you can land on this little battlement here, and then you can just jump around onto this platform. You don't want to go through the bottom level, because there's uh, frenzied rats there, and they'll kick your ass. So if you open this chest, and you can stand on top of the lid, and if you have fire pots, then you can throw them up at the ceiling. There's a bunch of commoners we need to kill. Killing them will permanently disable the Frenzy Flame Tower, but going up there is dangerous because you'll get hit by the Frenzy Flame. So if you throw fire pots at the floor here while standing on top of the, the chest lid, uh, then you can hit them through the floor and kill them. So there's six that need to die, so you know make sure you keep count of that. Once all six are dead, you can go out to check. Uh, and now the Frenzy Flame Tower is disabled permanently, so even if you come back here after reloading the area or whatever, uh, it will not Frenzy Flame at you. And there's a set of grace nearby just to the south of it. And then after that, you're going to run through the Frenzy Flame Village. There's one or two things to pick up here, but those don't matter right now. And we're going to head up towards the Church of Inhibition on the hill up here. Now, as you approach it, you're going to get kicked off of Torrent because you're going to get invaded by Festering Fingerprint Vike. He'll probably kick your ass because he has a spear that does madness build up. But if you run to the church and touch the Sight of Grace, even if he kills you, now that you interacted with this Grace, you'll respawn right here. So it's not a big deal if he kills you. And obviously, since you're right here, you can just pick up your runes and, uh, you know, it's not a problem. There's also a Sacred Tear here, so make sure you grab that. And in the corpse of the maiden nearby, you can grab her outfit, which I don't think is very nice to take clothes off a dead woman. Uh, but you can also dye the Lord of Blood's favor with her blood. So bring that bad boy back to Vare. You'll have the option to offer him your finger and be anointed as a pure blood knight in the Mogwin dynasty. So do that. You now get the bloody finger, which you can use to invade infinitely. And more importantly, if you talk to him again, you get the pure blood knight's medal which is what we're going to use to teleport directly into the Mogwin Palace. Once you're here, head up the stairs. Don't forget to grab the map off this corpse here. There's a set of grace at the top of this staircase right here, and then it's a straight shot all the way up to uh, the top level of the mausoleum. Uh, so I just left this in just so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, once you come into this dark area, obviously, using your lantern helps. There's a couple sanguine nobles in here that spawn, and they're really high level, so they will fuck you up. And especially if you're running, they throw uh, throwing daggers at you, so be careful of that. Um, but, you know, if you have to fight them, you shouldn't have too much trouble uh, at least doing damage to them. Anyway, so grab the Sight of Grace and come over to this big thing. Uh, and if you stand on this little pillar ruin thing here, you'll see there's a sanguine noble looking at a chest, and the chest is what we need to loot. Uh, so beyond him, there's a pillar. If you line up the top of your guy's head with the top of the pillar and then look a little bit further up, you can throw a throwing dagger at the pillar and that'll distract the Sanguine Noble because he gets distracted by the sound. And then you can run up behind him, open the chest and grab the Ancient Dragon Somberstone and then get the fuck out of there before he turns back around. And congratulations, you now have the materials you need to bring the Death's Poker up to plus 10. Doing this only took me a little over two hours, and that was including the parts that I cut out of this. So with this guide, you should be able to do this pretty quick in two hours or less. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, consider subscribing, and leave any comments you have or feedback down below. And I'll catch you later.